Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, today is Friday, praise God. So we're going to have a whole weekend to meditate on the things that we have received from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now remember, this night, this night, 12 midnight, breaking into tomorrow, Saturday, we are having uh, uh, 24 hours prayer and fasting. I don't want you to miss this. Invite your friends. Invite your friends. Now, we, we are going to share the, 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 the meeting, the Zoom link, so you can, you can see it and just join. It doesn't require a password. You just click on the link and you join the meeting. Let's have a great time. Let's, let's just have that time of fellowship. And, and listen, if you've never fasted for 24 hours before, try it. And you will see how the strength and the grace of God carries you. Praise God. That, that itself is a miracle. Praise God. So, so plan for it. It's beginning tonight, 12 midnight, breaking into Saturday. And we're going to be fasting all through Saturday till 12 midnight on Saturday. Praise God. I'm, I'm excited just to think of it. Praise God. All right, then. So, we are in chapter 8. Now, praise God, we're making progress. Hallelujah. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge perfect up, but charity edified. Now, you know, I told you Paul's writing to his, his, his children in Corinth, and they are saints. Now, so he was addressing different things. Like we found out, this is not the only letter he wrote to them. You know, you know he, he spoke about, particularly, he wrote a particular epistle about how to handle issues with fornication. Now, he wrote that. We don't have that in the Bible. See, now, you know, I was talking to someone, I said, imagine if someone... Um, is able to, uh, an archaeologist, or, or is able to find out those writings. And they come, oh, we found a letter Paul wrote, you know, and concerning this, he says, ah, please, 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 it's not part of the Bible. I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> God. And I, that's why I said, see, the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who had the voice of God, what they did with it and how their lives turned out to be. It's a compendium of testimony. Now, this is not the only testimony that exists. This is not the beginning and the end of all the testimony. Our lives today is a testimony in itself. So we are part of the scriptures. Praise God. All right then. So he says, Now concerning things touching, to, uh, touching um, as touching things offered to idols. Now he, 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 he brought up something here. He says, We know that we all have knowledge. That's to, that's to tell you the issue he was dealing with. We know we all have none. Knowledge perfect up. That's the truth. See, when you're too knowledgeable, it brings a kind of pride in you. And if you don't watch it, now especially when that knowledge is gained through studying, not from the Holy Spirit. I found out that when the Holy Spirit is the author of your knowledge, it brings with it. You know, the package comes with humility. When a man says, what I know, when a man keeps saying, what I know, you cannot, you cannot receive it. What I know, you cannot receive it. I bet you he didn't get that knowledge from the Lord. He read it somewhere. He, list, he heard it somewhere and he feels other people have not received it. So, but see, when a man receives knowledge from the Lord, the first thing that happens to you is how the whole world is going to hear this thing. And you want to break it down because it came to you as light and it looked so simple. Someone said to me, why do you always say it's very simple? Meanwhile, it is it's not simple. I said, but, but that's the truth because that's how I received it. You know how the Lord opens your understanding? You're like, whoa, can you imagine? How, how, how come? <laughs> Praise God. See, but you see, the secret is this. It's not simple because I say it's simple. It can only be simple when you haven't heard me say it. Go before the Lord with that and say, Lord, can you, can you reveal this thing to me? See, because when he speaks to you, he impacts it into you. He's not just talking there. Your hearing enters your ears. Okay, I understand now, Lord. I understand now. When the Lord is speaking to you, this is beautiful. 
there's a grace that he releases. The grace, number one, to know. Number two, at the same time, the grace to become it. So you find, I don't understand. It could be anything. It could be mathematics. I don't understand mathematics. It's too hard for me. And then you say, have you prayed about it? That's true. Okay, I'm going to pray about it. And then you go before, say, Father, I need your help, Holy Spirit. I need your help concerning mathematics. I just need your help. And then the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you. Say, hey, that equation you're having a problem with, look at it this way. Now, when he is speaking to you, it's not the same with when a teacher is talk, teaching you. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, you will just realize that before he even lands, you say, I, I can see it, I can see it, I can see it, praise God. Why? Because he opens up, he unveils, it, it's like he takes away the veil. Now you see the whole thing clearly. And that's how he impacts knowledge into us. So now, now you're the same one crying yesterday that is difficult. And now you're telling everybody, this is very easy now. This is very easy now. You know what? He removed the veil over your, over your eyes. And others need that veil too. Now you try to explain it. You can't hold it. Praise God. So, so he said, knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies. Love. See, now when the Lord gives it to you, when the Lord gives you knowledge, it was given to you true love because he is love himself so it's ministered in your heart as love now that same love is what will motivate you to want to edify others with it and not to be puffed up and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know <laughs> praise god mm. and, and and this is so true you know sometimes you think i know this thing the way it brings you another dimension you say hey and then now you start thinking of the message, that hot message you preached last week. Say, hail, Lord, please can you tell me everything first before I go and preach it? Now that's what it was many times. That's why it, it's, it's important you spend time with the Lord. Don't just run because the Lord say, hey, and you just run away and say, ah, I received the message from the Lord. Calm down. Receive the whole wisdom from him. Praise God. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Did you see that? If you think you know something, you don't know as you're supposed to know. But hey, if you love God, then you know him. And let me tell you this, when you know God, then you know everything. Praise <laughs> God. All right. Then he says, as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols. We know that an idol is nothing in the world. And that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, and the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him you know that now he says of course you've seen these things before you know i remember one time i was because where, where I, my, my village is in the river right area of, of river state so most, the, one of the road there's a, a road route there's also the waterway so if you follow the waterway you see some you know sometimes you're you're going by boat and you see things that you know i remember one time several years ago i was still um, little then I saw, I was by the shore waiting for our boat to come and, and someone came to the river with drinks and one chicken. And after doing all the incantation, the person threw everything into the river. Man, before the person was, before the person left that place, some young guys dived into the river. And they, they caught that chicken and began to look for the, the bottle of drinks that were thrown inside the river. I was like, Look at these guys. Praise <laughs> God. They're not even afraid that a guy can come back and they knew it was nothing. Praise <laughs> God. Now, now he's saying here that we know that there is no other God. So what, what, what we see them do is nothing. Because to us, there is only one God. And every praise, every sacrifice must go to only him. So when someone comes and says, he said, we know. Now understand Paul's message. He said, we know there is nothing. But then he says, <clears throat> How be it 
there is not in every man that knowledge for some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled follow me but meat commended us not to god for neither if we eat are we the better neither if we eat not are we the worse but take heed lest by any means your liberty the, this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak what's he saying now he's saying you know that i mean <laughs> imagine if you're hungry as a child or you're very hungry and there's no food and then the only food that exists is somebody who came to maybe one shrine around there and they came to imagine someone cooks a pot of food and brings to a shrine and say oh uh, the god of waiting waiting whatever it is ah i have come oh, i have brought pot of soup for you to eat you know nothing is going to eat that food. You, you know the only person that is going to eat that food is the whoever is in charge of that shrine who will come and carry the food and eat <laughs> now and now you're hungry really hungry and you don't have food and then that is there he said ah, no ah, hey, that one is offered to god so well i heard someone say the bible say we are gods so i collect the sacrifice <laughs> but you know now he said if you eat that thing nothing is going to happen to you but you see he says it's not everybody that has this knowledge because you know i mean if you've lived around if you've lived around for a while you you must have heard people say ah somebody went to um, touch something and then i had someone to you know share several years ago you know he went to dis destroy some shrines and then the, the attack he received see the attack he received and he was wondering and eventually the guy died <coughs> to say ah but that that wasn't that thing powerful now that's what paul is saying you see conscience it is in the conscience now someone else can go there and destroy everything and knows that he's because this is nothing. Someone just people. There is no God. And if any go any voice wants to arise, he will silence that voice. Because he knows who he is. Now someone else will go there with you and go back home afraid. Now, where is the fear coming from? From his conscience. He feels, I know that we have served this God for so long. Hey, hey, this God is this God is going to come against us. So hey. What's going on? His conscience. Now, what will heal that conscience? The truth of God's word. So Paul is saying, even though we can eat, we can, we can take it, please bring that food. And you eat it and be satisfied and drink water. I say, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> you know, and carry on like nothing. He said, he said, hey, relax. Understand that there are people who their conscience have not grown to such a point to receive that as the truth. Some they are even eating, they are praying in their hearts, saying, Oh God, please don't allow this demon, don't allow this uh, juju or whatever. Hey God, they are praying for you <laughs> in, their, in their hearts. So what's going on? Their conscience is not matured enough to handle it. So Paul is saying, <clears throat> you, we should consider that also. Now, so he says, don't let the, li the liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee, which had knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. So Paul is actually attesting that, look, someone can see you eat and say, ah, if Pastor Susan so can go and eat, I'm going to eat too. And then they eat and they get into trouble. Why? Because they don't have the knowledge that you have. Follow me. Let, let's finish this up. But when ye sin so against the brother and would their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. Now, let me relate this to our present time now. You know, the 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 whole coronavirus thing that's going on now they advise you wear your facial mask where now someone goes and say look forget it i'm not wearing any mask there's no now be careful how you do such things <clears throat> you see why because you may lead someone else astray someone who may not have the knowledge that you have now to you any day i hear i, I hear or feel my whatever is happening in my body i know what to do and automatically I'll, be, I'll restore my body to health. 
See, someone else may see you and follow you. Ah, ah, hey, this one, my, my pastor is not wearing facial mask or he's not even using sanitizer. He doesn't believe that there's coronavirus. And then people go and they get infected and they die. Paul says, when they die because of you, he says, you're offending the body of Christ. See, so if the government say, do this, at least, you see, when, when you don't do it, make sure you give clear explanation to the people who look up to you. They should understand and let them know that you're not against what the government is saying. We don't set people against the government, even though we have a higher truth that we walk in. But you see, we walk in that higher truth with understanding. Because we know when the consequences come, we know how to handle it. But the ones who don't know, don't put your knowledge. Don't use your knowledge and put them in danger. So that's what Paul is saying. Praise God. Whoa, we've got to stop here. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. You know what? I'll see you tonight. <laughs> Praise God by 12 midnight. Let's get ready and prepared for it. Go on. Have a blessed day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye.